Hi, this is David Montrell. Welcome to video 2C, which is the third of four videos for the quantitative topic in the 2012 FRM. And that's a part one topic, of course. We continue with two readings that have that reappear in the FRM from prior years. And that's, first of all, two brief chapters from Raychev. And this are these are respectively on discrete distributions and continuous probability distributions. And then a chapter that reappears from Jorian's Value at Risk, that's the textbook, third edition, not the handbook, on Monte Carlo simulation. And as usual, learning spreadsheets associated with some of these topics, although for exam relevance, if time is short, none of these here are tagged with the uh, high relevance. Although, later if you have time, in regard to the Monte Carlo simulation, in my view, that can be uh, very abstract until you see a concrete illustration. So you might find the uh, Monte Carlo simulation and correlated random variables interesting uh, to the extent they help uh, illustrate those concepts in Jorian. So chapter two, discrete probabilities in Rachev, we're asked to identify common occurrences of, <clears throat> excuse me, the Bernoulli binomial and Poisson distributions. And so these right here would be three of the more common discrete, remember we're in the discrete chapter here, um, distributions to characterize random variables. The Bernoulli, perhaps the simplest of all, because it's just an on or an off, it's a toggle. And so a very a common application for the Bernoulli would be for the default of an obligor, credit, or bond. Does it default or does it not on or off? Notice how the characterization here of the Bernoulli could not be simpler. Now, if we have a series of Bernoullis, then we have a binomial, if they are independent. You probably are familiar or rec at least recognize this is a probability uh, de density function, or I should say, excuse me, a probability mass function since the, since the variable is discrete. The probability that y equals k under a binomial is given by this formula here. And so we would use the binomial to, sit, to uh, estimate probabilities of numbers of defaults in a basket of credit or a basket of credit default swaps. Keep in mind, though, it assumes uh, IID, it assumes independence between the events. And then the Poisson distribution, uh, probably the most popular traditional measure for operational loss frequency. Not severity, but the frequency. Remember these discrete uh, distributions characterize counting variables. So the frequency would be a counting variable. The Poisson would be popular. It's skewed so we can get some, uh, so we can get some tail, if, uh, he uh, tail heaviness if we like. And it's very succinct. We only need the lambda parameter. And just to uh, compare the binomial of Poisson to the normal, and please note the normal is continuous. I'm sure you know that normal is also very parsimonious. Only two parameters, mean and dispersion, sigma squared for the variance. And with all of these, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So in the case of the binomial of Poisson, right, we have the mean, which is n, the number, times the probability of success, we might say. And because the binomial is a series of Bernoullis, Q is 1 minus P. So the probability of, if, if P is 20%, then Q is 1 minus 20% or 80%. So that's that the mean of that binomial is just N, the number, times P, the probability of success. Then the variance is N times P times Q, such that the standard deviation is the square root of that. And the, the Poisson has an elegant feature here in that the lambda, the only parameter we specify, is both the mean and the variance. That means the standard deviation of the Poisson is the square root of lambda. And really, that's how brief the uh, discrete is. In truth, we don't have we don't have a whole lot of discrete parametric distributions to draw from. In truth, we um, oftentimes use actual data under an empirical distribution when we're dealing with discrete distributions. So the continuous